Hey. Kurt? Shh. Don't look at me. My name's not really Kurt. It's John. John Cock Tostoy. I'm actually a filming location investigator, and today I'm trying to track down all the filming locations for Fletch. You can either help me, or you can go to prison for the next 20 years. It's up to you. I'll help you. Thought I'd say that. So today, join me and Adam the Woo as we try and track down as many filming locations as we can for the Chevy Chase classic, Fletch. Let's go see what we can find. So Fletch sits down and has a conversation with Fat Sam about when the next shipment of dope is coming in. Meanwhile, someone's watching them from the Santa Monica Pier. Yeah, this is the spot so when Chevy leaves over at Fat Sam's Burger Spot, which is just an undercover ring for, for what was really happening, he goes over here. I think the character's name was Crease or Creasy. I never could tell if it was Crease or Creasy, but he was sitting over here in this corner talking to Erwin M. Fletcher which start, it starts off at the beginning of the movie and there's a lot of profanity right at the very beginning. I think there's more profanity in that first minute than there is in the rest of the film. <laughs> I always noticed that when I was young watching it, but it was right over here. They're both sitting right up against that corner of the wooden here and the wood still all looks the same. Just a brief scene. There's also a shot looking this way of them leaning up against the pier. Looks a bit different because they've extended the pier outwards towards the sand a bit. Fletch comes walking under the pier, and when he does, you can see these buildings in the background. This is the area where he first meets Stanwick, walking through here. Kind of tough to tell, though, because of the tide and the way they put some of the concrete pylons in. And the tide could have been way in, it could have been way out. You can see a lot of these are still the same, the wooden, wooden ones from 85. But it's, it's tough. We're in the same general vicinity, but it's hard to pick the exact wooden, wooden pylons. All right, so I think we got everything in this area. So you want to follow me over to the next spot? As long as that spot doesn't entail dressing me up as Little Bo Peep. Well, we'll see about that. Uh, this house right here behind me was Alan Stanwyck's house. Well, actually, this is the gate and a guard shack, but on the other side of that gate, up a long driveway, is the house that was used for Alan Stanwyck's house. And of course, we first see it when he brings Fletch there to try and convince him to kill him. Now, although you can't see the house from the street, there's a lot of pictures that you can find online, and you can see that this is definitely the house from Fletch. But this is actually a very famous house. This is the former Hearst estate, and a lot of movies have been filmed here, including The Godfather, The Bodyguard, The Jerk, an episode of Charlie's Angels. This is where JFK and Jackie Kennedy spent their honeymoon. A lot of amazing stuff has happened at this house. So Fletch goes to see Stanwyck's doctor to try and get some information out of him. And he goes to the doctor under the name Arnold Babar. Now Emmett Walsh, the actor who played the doctor, had this to say in an interview about that scene. So Michael said, uh, okay, let's go over to the infirmary, over to the kind of the hospital universal, which is a big, big place. So we went in there and Michael started looking around at all this stuff. You know, hanging on the walls, that's a scope. And he's, oh, we'll use that, yeah, and we'll use this. But I'm still kind of unclear if they actually filmed that scene at Universal or if they just used the Universal Hospital for research. Either way, it's a hilarious scene, and one of my favorite jokes in the entire movie takes place during that scene. Babar. Isn't there a children's book about an elephant named Babar? I don't know. I don't have any. No children? No elephant books. So this right here behind me, this is the Riviera Country Club. This is where he comes to talk to Gail, Alan Stanwyck's wife. Those right there, those are the tennis courts. 
And that's where he meets her while she's playing tennis. Of course, this is a very private club. We can't actually get inside. However, there's a street around the side where we think we might be able to get a glimpse of her bungalow. So we're gonna head over there now and see what we can see. So this right here is the backside of the country club. And we think that on the other side of this gate that Adam's standing in front of are the bungalows. He's gonna check right now. Yeah, but I think that if you look over this, I think that her bungalow was right there. Now, if you remember, Fletch walks up a set of steps and then approaches the front door of Gail's bungalow. If we go back and take a look, you can see that there's a road behind him that goes uphill and curves to the right. These are the steps that Fletch walks up, and this is the road that you see behind him that goes uphill and curves to the right. Now the bungalow itself has changed quite a bit. They've added a second story to it, but Adam was saying that he studied this entire property and this is the only building that matches up. So we're about 99% sure that this is the right building. Can I borrow your towel for a sec? My car just hit a water buffalo. Now this right here is about the best shot that you can get of the tennis courts. Still can't see too much. Definitely can't match up any scenes, but you can see the tennis courts right there. And Adam was just saying he thinks possibly this green and white building right here might be where the restaurant was, where he orders the steak sandwich. Bloody Mary and a steak sandwich and a steak sandwich, please. Very good. Here we see Fletch supposedly on his way home, but he's actually driving on Montana away from 4th Street. He's actually behind his apartment, currently moving away from it. We then see him coming down 4th Street. Notice all the palm trees and this building right here. And then as he passes by the front of his apartment, he sees his ex-wife's lawyer's car parked right about here. Right here is where he turns into the alley. Looks pretty similar. I was just noticing though, they actually covered up one of the garage doors, that first one. Now, when he gets out of his car, you can see these garage doors behind him. The doors have since been changed and it would have been right here where he parks his car. And the way that you can tell is the front corner of his car is right in between these two windows down here. Even though those garage doors are changed, there's like a little, there's a little wooden door there that you can see behind Chevy's head. Oh, yes. Zoom in on it. Yep. It was right behind the dumpster. No more dumpsters though. Now they use plastic trash cans. It's the little things. And there it is. That's the fire escape. That was the window leading into Fletch's apartment. We're watching the scene again. So they've extended this pipe out, but Chevy had the metal trash can and he puts his foot right on that. They had that extended down, same ladder. So he puts his foot on that, gets on the metal trash can, puts his other foot on that, then climbs up that very ladder and tries to go in that window with the bars on it. And then the lawyer, his wife, his ex-wife's lawyer, is right up there in front of that other window where the screen has fallen down. Pretty awesome. What do you think, Adam? It's the best thing ever. It's so strange how just like one little thing like that can make you so happy when you see it in person. Yep. Not a lot of people would understand being so excited about when, a fire escape. I'm like watching it in real time as it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great because this is one of those locations where, yeah, you know, they, they've since put a gate on the parking and they've covered up those windows. But other than that, not too much has changed back here. A lot, you can match a lot of stuff up. Yeah. We see the police coming down the street right here alongside the Santa Monica Pier. Now things have changed here a bit. They've narrowed the street up there on the hill. Meanwhile, Fletch is using a payphone that was located roughly right about here. You can see the Boathouse restaurant behind him, which is now Bubba Gump's. The cops are headed straight for Fat Sam's. Gummy notices the cops coming towards him, and he takes off towards the pier.
So Fletch realizes if he's gonna get to the bottom of things, he's gonna have to head out to Utah. So I guess I better head out that way myself. The first shot that we get in Utah is Fletch's airplane landing right here at the Salt Lake City International Airport. So when Fletch first gets to Utah, he's driving on this road past the lake. This is the exact spot. My mind is blown. I know this is weird, but so far this is the coolest location that I found as far as Fletch goes. And I know it's just a road, but I think I'm so excited because it's just a road and I didn't think we would be able to find the exact spot. But if you look, absolutely everything here matches up. Look from this pole, this, this utility pole right here, and you can count one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one is slightly different. That's exactly how it is in the movie. And then there's a road right there. And then on this side, you've got the mountain that comes down. And then that, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but like a, uh, I don't know, some kind of a mill right there, some kind of a factory. And then the mountains on this side also match up exactly. The only thing that's missing from this spot is the cow crossing sign, which was like right about where I'm standing. It would have been somewhere right about here. Other than that, this is exactly how it is in the movie and my mind is blown. This is so cool. The odds are Chevy Chase wasn't even here. It was, you know, it was probably a stunt driver driving the car, but so cool. Now, as I continued about half a mile down the road, I found that those cow crossing signs do still exist. This one looks exactly like the one that you see in the movie. The post is different, but the sign itself is exactly the same. So there's a really quick scene of Fletch driving through Ogden and he's driving down 24th Street passing by F Avenue and you can see all of this. So we first see him pass by this building. He then passes by F Avenue. And then we see him pass by both of these houses. And then this building, which has changed a bit, but it's still recognizable. And then finally, he goes over the railroad tracks and that structure right down there can be seen clearly. So while Fletch was here in Utah, of course he needed a place to stay and he stayed at the Mountain View Motel, now the Mountain View Apartments. And other than the fact that it went from being a motel to apartments, it looks pretty much the same. Uh, right there in front, that was of course the lobby of the motel. And I'm kind of bummed that it's an apartment building now because I was actually hoping to get in there and see if the payphone is still there. You know what? Maybe if I call the apartments, they'll let me come in and take a look. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, yeah, my name's Peter Lemongello, and I was calling about the movie Fletch. That was, he hello? Hello? So Fletch is in Utah, and he's at his motel in the lobby on the payphone talking to the guy at the real estate office. And after he gets off the phone, he heads over to the real estate office after hours to break in and try and get some information about Sandwick. And as he's approaching the real estate office, we see him pass right by this gas station. But that must have been one heck of a drive from his motel over to the realty office because the motel that he's staying at is in fact in Utah, but the realty office is here in California in a small town called Pear Blossom, about an hour and a half north of Los Angeles. So right here in front is where Fletch would have pulled up and parked his car. There's no longer a chain link fence going around it. And luckily, no scary guard dogs. And for the most part, the building looks the same. It now has a cutout there in the roof for that cactus. It didn't have that back then. And right here in front is where that pathway would have been between the chain link fence. And right there is where all those realty signs would have been. So Fletch is standing right here in front of the building, looking around, trying to figure out how to get inside. And then he walks over here to the side and there's a windmill and a tree, both of which are no longer here. But he climbs up the windmill and then over to the roof.
And then he comes back down and he goes through that window right there, which funny enough is the only window here that now has bars on it. And then once he's inside, you can see that window behind him. And then you can immediately see that window to the side of him. And then he walks over here to where the desk is and he's going through the paperwork. And right there, that's the window that the dog's looking through. Because behind the dog, you can see these buildings across the street. I was kind of hoping that windmill and tree would still be here. Oh well. And then after the dog breaks through the window, Fletch comes running out of the front door and then down the path that was right here and over to his car, which was parked right over here. And you can see that sign across the street for the market. After coming back from Utah, we see Fletch park right in front of his apartment building. He would have been parked right about here, but there's now some cars blocking it. The camera then turns and it shows him walking up the front steps of his apartment right there where Adam is currently walking up. Now, once Fletch gets inside of his apartment, he's attacked by a couple of cops who tell him that he's got to come downtown and see the chief. Uncle Phil, how could you? This is the Los Angeles Police Museum in Highland Park, and this is where they bring Fletch to see the chief. So right here is where the two officers bring Fletch into the police station. They then walk over to the counter and Fletch tries to make a phone call. So they would have come through that door and then walked right over here and where these windows now are, this is where the counter was. And that window back there, that can be seen in the background behind the cop that's standing at the counter. And when the camera is looking the other way, those office doors that you see behind them, that looks a little bit different because they've since added an elevator. Now, this wasn't here back in the 80s. So this, of course, changed the entire look right here. Now, this is more of the view that you would have got. This is looking from the other side of the counter. There's just windows here now. So they take Fletch in to see the chief and his office would have been upstairs. But unfortunately, the entire upstairs has been gutted and turned into exhibits. Walls have been torn down, new walls have been put up. So nothing up here really looks the same anymore. Like, so for example, this right here is a wall that was added to turn this into an exhibit. This used to be offices. So I walked around the entire outside of this building studying the windows. And by doing that, I was able to figure out that right here is where the chief's office was. And just to the left of these two windows, that thin window is the one that you see right outside of the chief's office. So those two windows on the right side are the ones that the chief is sitting right in between. Now, unfortunately, where the chief's office was, that's been turned into the North Hollywood shootout exhibit. Cool exhibit, though. Hey, you and Tommy Lasorda. So they then take Fletch down to the jail cells, and luckily, this area is still exactly the same, except for everything's been painted gray. In the movie, it was beige, and of course, they've added some museum pieces. But other than that, this area is just like it was back in the 80s. So they take Fletch into that very first cell, and as far as I can tell, the only thing that's different is in the movie, it was a double bed, and it's now the single bed. And then the chief is standing right outside of the cell. He takes out his gun and tells Fletch that He's going to shoot him. And then just to the left of Fletch, just over his shoulder, you can see the corner of that window. Now, this has got to be one of the coolest things I have ever seen. Behind Fletch on the right side, you can see graffiti that says Brandy. Now, even though the walls have been painted, you can still see where Brandy is etched into the wall. That's the very same graffiti that you see behind Fletch. My mind is blown. Now, from what I was told, this is all the original stuff in here back from when this was a real working jail. The toilet, the sink. I don't know if the bed was swapped out or if maybe they just removed the top portion. But yeah, this is what it was like in here back when this was a real jail. So Fletch decides to tail Alan Stanwyck and find out what the heck is going on. Here we see him driving down Pine Avenue, away from Ocean Boulevard, in the city of Long Beach. A 
Now they're now turning onto Shoreline Drive from Pine Avenue. After seeing Alan have a secret meeting with the chief, Fletch heads back to his apartment, entering into the alley as he plans to head up the fire escape. And once again, he parks roughly in the same spot, just past this utility pole. He then gets out of the car and he's about to go up the fire escape. And when he goes to grab the trash can, he looks inside of these windows right here, which have since been covered. And he sees all the police cars in the underground parking and that's when he gets out of there as quick as he can. And again, they've since put a gate, but right here is where the police cars would have been coming up from the underground parking. And the chase begins. And for some reason, when it shows Fletch speeding away, they're now in a completely different alleyway. There's mountains, there's commercial buildings. I mean, it looks completely different. It looks nothing like the alley behind Fletch's apartment. Now Fletch doesn't get very far before coming to a stop because he spots a possible getaway car and he's now in Long Beach, California, pretty far from Santa Monica. But he spots a young man inside of a car and approaches him and tries to convince him that he's from the smog patrol, not realizing that that kid is actually stealing that car. Now this right here is pretty much the shot of them pulling away from the curb, but this truck is kind of blocking it. If we step out into the street, you can see those buildings across the street still look the same. Afternoon, Smog Patrol. Had your emissions checked? No, sir. Fluorocarbons, ozone? No, sir. Well, let's check it out. What do you say? Hey, uh, it smells pretty good. And the car chase now goes from Long Beach, California to Highland Park and we see them passing through the intersection of Stratford Road and Avenue 50. And as usual, everything's now blocked by trees and bushes. But this house right here is this house. And then this house is this one that's now completely covered by a shrub. So they come down Meridian Street towards Avenue 51 in the stolen car with all the police cars following them. And they then kind of Cut to the left a little bit and pull into the parking lot that I'm currently standing in. So they're now back in Long Beach and the next couple of minutes of this chase all take place in Long Beach on Shoreline Drive. And as you can see, the section where it's supposed to look like they're getting on the freeway doesn't really look the same anymore because so many new buildings have been built. Now all of those buildings that you see behind them during this part of the scene are still there. They're just behind all of these new buildings. This building right here is this one. Now notice that mirrored glass building behind the motorcycle cop. A few moments later, he's riding past it again. Here's what it looks like today. And then one more time, we see him riding past that building. Right here is where Fletch jumps over the grassy area. You can tell by that bridge, how these trees are blocking that building that you see. But right after we pass underneath the bridge, you're gonna see that building. So they're now back in Highland Park, turning off of Avenue 51 onto York Boulevard, 
passing right by this pizza place, which at the time was a Pizza Man restaurant. They turn onto York Boulevard and they cause an accident right here in front of Don's Auto Repair. And believe it or not, all these years later, Don's Auto Repair is still there. As the chase is coming to an end, Fletch is coming down the street right here being followed by some police cars and you can see this awning very briefly. There's then a very quick shot of a police car turning onto 2nd Street from Wilshire. Now that building on the corner has changed, but you can see this taller office building. Fletch continues down the street and then turns into this driveway right here. And as the police car goes a little bit further, you can see this staircase. So Fletch would have been parked right about here. And he then enters in through that door. But he goes right through that door and then walks through the kitchen. You can see there's the kitchen right there. You can hear the clanging of the dishes. I'm tempted to go in there and pick up a tray and see if I can make my way into the, uh, into the banquet hall. And although we're tempted to try and go through there, obviously that wouldn't be wise. So what are we going to do, Adam? Do something that's not wise and go through there. <laughs> we're no. going to go ask permission. Okay, let's go ask that, permission. That always works out so well. Right. So we're going, uh, we're walking around to the front of the hotel. This appears to be a extremely fancy hotel and Adam and I are very fancy people. Yep. So I wore my, uh, my Sunday best. So I think it'll work. So this is it. We got into the That's room. So cool. <laughs> we asked and they were nice enough to show us. Now, believe it or not, same chandeliers and same ceiling inside of this banquet room. Now, of course, a lot has changed in here. They've done a full remodel, so it's kind of hard to match things up. But notice those double doors right there in the background. I'm pretty sure that's these. And that would mean that these double doors on the right side are the ones that the police officer walks through from outside. Now, a lot has definitely changed in this room, but this is definitely the place where Fred the Dwarf Dwarfman is honored by Fletch. So glad that we were able to get inside of this room. Just awesome. So Fletch is now back in Utah, and this time we see him at the Ogden Airport picking up his rental car. Okay, so it's kind of hard to get the same angle because the camera is actually shooting from out there uh, on the field. You can see an airplane in the shot, but basically it's close to this. Now the car rental place that Fletch comes out of, that's gone. It would have been like pretty much right where I'm standing or where this building is. And then you can see that tower and you can see this building. Of course, you can see more of the building because the camera is set further back. And this little section right here, you can see that. Now the only thing is in the movie, there was also a tower behind this building. That's also gone. And then Fletch's rental car would have been parked right out there in the parking lot. And those are the mountains that you see behind him. Now Fletch may really be at the Ogden Airport in Utah, but the house that he goes to next is back in Los Angeles in Highland Park. And right here is where Fletch pulls up and parks. But that house that you see behind him when he parks his car, that's a little bit of trickery. So where he parks his car, this is what's actually across the street, a parking lot. And then right over here, this is the house that you see behind him when he gets out of his car. So again, a little bit of camera trickery. Now this of course is the house that he's headed to. Once again, not in Utah, but here in Los Angeles. Now the front of it has changed a bit. They've added a second entrance right there on the left side of the porch. A few things have changed here on the outside of the house, but for the most part, still pretty recognizable. So Fletch heads up to the front door, rings the bell and checks the mailbox. Now, unfortunately, I do think that's a different mailbox because it's got a different design on it. However, that bell just to the left of the mailbox, that appears to be the very same one that Fletch rings. Of course, once inside the house, 
Fletch meets the caretaker. And we were just talking to the guy that owns this house and he was telling us that they definitely filmed those scenes inside. He said that a lot has changed, but some stuff still looks the same. She moved out. So you're saying she moved out. So Fletch pulls a fast one on the caretaker and luckily makes it to his car and speeds off just in the nick of time as he pulls out his shotgun. So now that Fletch has a better idea of what's going on, he heads back to the beach, of course undercover, and he goes there to try and convince Gummy and Fat Sam to come back to the newspaper and tell their story and pretty much rat out the chief. The finale of the movie takes place right here at Alan Stanwyck's mansion. Uh, Gail and Fletch come here and they find Stanwyck dressed as Fletch, waiting to kill them, and then the chief shows up. There's a whole, it's a whole big fiasco, but of course in the end, Fletch wins, and then Fletch and Gale head off to Rio. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this video. I think we did pretty good. We found most of the stuff, maybe not every location, but- A we, lot of stuff yeah. that has never been documented before. It's now out there. I wanna thank Adam the Woo for coming on this adventure with me. Uh, Fletch, we were talking about this. Fletch is your favorite Chevy Chase movie? My favorite Chevy movie followed by vacation. It depends on my mood. But I would say, I, I think Fletch just barely takes the lead of the two, but I do love vacation, so. And so that's why I had to bring Adam along on this, being that it's his favorite Chevy movie, and, uh, and we did it, and I'm happy we did. So thank you for coming along. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.